Yuji Itadori's existence is one big lie, and he isn't who you think he is. My friend. So why exactly am I saying that his existence is one big lie? Well, from when we were introduced to Yuji at the beginning of the series, we were all deeply convinced that he was just your typical high schooler who could casually throw a shot put at 23.12 meters, just behind the current world record holder, Ryan Krauser. And not only was that the case, the shot put completely dented the goalposts, meaning if it went for the goals, then Yuji would have just broken the world record with little to no effort. Gege Akutami did a fantastic job at concealing this 15 year old strength. Anyways, there has been a lot of confusion hmm. concerning the strength of Yuji. Some say that he easily walks into the special grade rank. Some say that he's stronger than Yuta, not mentioning any names. Some even say that Yuji is nowhere near the almighty strength of Panda. I don't know who said that. But we will finally break down the true strength of Yuji Itadori and what sort of potential he holds. It's not clearly stated in the series about Yuji's strength. All we are holding on to are his many difficult battles. This is something which makes Yuji much more interesting. We are 230 chapters deep into Jujutsu Kaisen and we still do not have any information regarding Yuji's supposed curse technique as well as a phenomenon which is his physical strength. So with that being said, hold tight because we are about to uncover every little thing about our main protagonist and if he truly deserves a spot amongst the special grades. Before we make a decision whether or not Yuji is as powerful as we think he is, I'll first need to go through the way we are going to scale his character in terms of strength. We will be using the famous Arzin power scaling system. Now as for what this system is and how it works, towards the end of this video we will break down Yuji's overall strength into three different categories. The first category is analysing the physical ability, which consists of endurance, speed and power. The second category is their battle intellect. This is their overall intelligence as well as how far their brain power can elevate them in a dire situation or cutthroat battle. The third and final category is the character's jujutsu abilities, understanding how powerful it is, what techniques they can use and how efficiently they can utilize it. But we will separate these three categories into their own tests, with each category being scored out of 20, meaning it will give us a final score out of 60. The reason why each category will be scored out of 20 is because of how complex certain characters and their abilities are. Anyways, it's pretty simple and I hope you guys get the gist of the Arzin system. Huh? I know for a fact that you guys will have different opinions on this, so at the end of the video be sure to let me know what you guys would have scored Yuji out of the three categories which I just mentioned and why. So without further ado, let's decipher Yuji Itadori's true strength. From what we've seen from the beginning of the series is how Yuji's character was always in a state of limbo, questioning his purpose and what he wants to achieve in his lifetime. His mind was fogged with the thoughts of death, but not in the way you would typically think. Wasuke Itadori, Yuji's grandfather, mentioned to Yuji that he is a strong kid and he should use that to help others whenever he can. He also follows up by telling Yuji not to die alone like he did, but instead die surrounded by others. So that's when Yuji comes up with an ultimatum to make sure that his loved ones die in the best way possible and how he is simply a cog in a massive machine. But that's something that I always question. There is no way Akutami would create a main protagonist like Yuji just for him to play an insignificant role in the Jujutsu world. This is when it's revealed in chapter 143 when Yuji fell into a dream state after being quote unquote killed by Yuta, that he is not just someone whose purpose is on the same level as Ijuchi, no offense. We then realize that Yuji is indeed a death painting womb, who was created and manipulated by Kenjaku himself. Why exactly did Kenjaku target Jin and Kaiori Itadori? There is a hidden meaning that goes much deeper with Kenjaku's motives and it could reveal to us the absurd strength that Yuji could potentially hold. So the best way to understand the level of Yuji's insane power is to analyze each of his battles from the very beginning all the way to the latest chapter. There will definitely be a lot of foreshadowing and uncovered details that we all missed. It will also give us a better perspective of Yuji's abnormal growth in such a short amount of time. 
So why don't we break down every single piece of evidence that could reveal to us that Yuji might actually be stronger than Yuta. I don't know who said that. So now we will be analysing every single battle of Yuji's which he has had so far in Jujutsu Kaisen. This is how we will get to understand the development of Yuji's strength from the start all the way to the latest chapters. Our goal is to nitpick his battles and take as much information as we can concerning his power and how far he has come. This could determine whether Yuji is worthy of being seen as one of the strongest in the series or he could just be an average Joe. But from what we've all seen so far, I'm betting all my money on the fact that Yuji has so much more in store for us. Yuji's very first encounter with a cursed spirit would come straight away in the first chapter, with himself and Megami taking on a few cursed spirits which were lured into the school due to Sukuna's sealed curse finger. But even before that we had seen some crazy physical ability being displayed by Yuji on the school grounds. What Yuji managed to do was throw the shot put at 23.12 meters. To put that into perspective, the world record holder Ryan Krauser managed to hit a world record of 23.56 meters. What makes things even crazier is the fact that Yuji's shot put dented the goalposts, meaning if the gold went there, then a 15 year old high schooler would have casually broken the world record. What? Anyways, from what we can recollect is that Sasaki and Igichi had gone on to unseal Sukuna's fingers, eventually being captured by a cursed spirit. But this is where things get interesting concerning Yuji's raw strength, regardless of any jujutsu training whatsoever. As Megami stares down the cursed spirit, Yuji jumps all the way to the fourth floor with ease and fly kicks the curse with great power. But not only that, he was able to maneuver himself in such a fashion that he also saved Sasaki from the curse's grip. This then leads us to seeing Megami being ambushed by a much larger curse. He was taking a lot of damage, keeping in mind that Megami isn't just your average teenager. He was brought up in a world of Jujutsu and has had time to develop his curse technique. Whereas Yuji on the other hand has zero experience and this would be the first time coming across a cursed spirit. But even still, Yuji was capable of punching the giant curse and even grabbing a hold of it at one point. The punch in itself had surprised Megami, with him clearly stating in amazement, what raw strength. With absolutely no training, Yuji would still fight this giant curse head on. He would continue taking on brutal hits by this beast. This right here is where we understand the endurance and stamina of an untrained Yuji, due to him never backing down and trying his best to protect Megami. But of course because of Yuji's suicidal tendencies, he decides to consume the famous curse finger. It is stated that there is only a 1 in a million chance of the king of all curses, Ryoman Sukuna, being incarnated. If any other person besides Yuji consumed the curse finger, then they would die instantly. Yuji is that one in a million, which just adds more and more questions to his true purpose and existence in the world of Jujutsu. Yuji's next test would come straight after he is enrolled into Jujutsu High and has been informed of his postponed execution. He understands his purpose in the world of Jujutsu and is determined to consume all 20 cursed fingers in order to put an ultimate end to Ryoman Sukuna. Anyways, Gojo takes Megami, Nobara and Yuji to Roppongi to exercise a curse from inside a building which is next to a cemetery. Gojo announces that this is a field test for both Yuji and Nobara, as he gives Yuji the Slaughter Demon, a cursed tool which is infused with cursed energy and can kill curses. This is because although Yuji has cursed energy running through him, he still has no control over it, thus why the cursed tool would come in handy. As they enter the building, Nobara forces Yuji to split up with him. As he wanders through, just above him a cursed spirit was on the verge of chopping his head off. In a matter of seconds, Yuji's reaction time is off the charts. For someone who has literally no experience, was able to sense the curse above him and even chop one of its arms off by using the slaughtered demon. Yuji's only previous experience of battling a curse was when he teamed up with Megami against the cursed spirits at the school. But Yuji took all that information and showed off the moves of a seasoned veteran. He realizes straight away that this cursed spirit would go for a head on attack, as he then slides underneath it and slices off one of its legs. He then goes for the finishing blow by stabbing the curse right through the head. This would be the perfect example of Yuji's battle intellect. Although he has been thrown straight in with the sharks, Yuji has adapted in a matter of days. Those moves which he pulled off prove to us that he always belonged to the Jujutsu world. Yuji, sir. 
Gojo even compliments Yuji for his insane ability, regardless of him having no experience. Gojo states, There are Jujutsu sorcerers with great potential, but if they can't get over their fear or disgust of curses, they can fall by the wayside. Gojo even mentions how Yuji is not hesitant at all to kill these curses. So in other words, Yuji was made for this. With Nobara in a pickle against the cursed spirit she's facing, due to a hostage situation, Nobara decides to let her guard down in order to free the child, but from within the walls Yuji smashes right through, cutting the arm off the curse and saving the child. This then gives Nobara the chance to finish this curse off once and for all. Yuji with little to no experience was able to sense what was happening beyond the wall and intervene, to eventually save both the child and Nobara. Given the fact that this is practically Yuji's second time facing off against cursed spirits, he showed levels of someone who seemed to have been trained in the art of Jujutsu from the very beginning, surprisingly outshining Nobara in this case. Following up after this, Yuji, Nobara and Megami would be assigned to a mission which was far out of their reach. This would become the turning point in Yuji's perception of the Jujutsu world and how dark and intense it can become. Ijuchi goes on to explain the grade system to the three, with him finishing up by saying, when confronted by a special grade, the options are either run away or die, do not engage. But little did they know this specific mission would be a setup by the higher ups. As the trio enter the detention center, they go on to witness the brutal killings of the prisoners. That is when Nobara is sucked away and both Megami and Yuji are confronted by a special grade finger bearer. This would become the pair's biggest challenge so far. However, the presence of this finger bearer had them both paralyzed in fear. Yuji would then escape this shock and attempt to stab this curse only for it to effortlessly slice off Yuji's left hand. Even with his left arm spewing out blood, Yuji's determination to keep fighting is what makes him so special. He forces Megami to escape and save Nobara, whilst he takes on the special grade finger bearer all by himself. Of course, this would be a complete mismatch with Yuji being pulverized by the finger bearer. Yuji would do whatever it takes to buy as much time against the finger bearer and again showing off his incredible durability. It was stated by Ijuchi how a special grade would need carpet bombing done onto it to inflict some sort of damage. Now can you imagine the scale of this finger bearer? Although Yuji was sustaining a lot of damage, he still remained conscious and kept moving forward. One of the biggest surprises would be when he was somewhat holding back the finger bearer's cursed energy bomb for a few seconds before it completely blasted him away. Even with his body in disarray, being hit with a barrage of the finger bearer's attacks, Yuji still got up and went in for another punch. That is only until Sukuna would admire Yuji's perseverance and take control, commencing Sukuna's reign of terror for a while. So what we can take from this battle is that Yuji's endurance is on a different level. It is easily on par with Megami's or even higher at this point, due to the fact that Yuji with little to no training was getting hit with cursed energy infused bombs and still had the will to keep fighting. So even with minimal experience, Yuji's natural raw physical strength is up there with semi grade 1 sorcerers or even at the rank of grade 1. This now puts us into Yuji's final challenge of the fearsome Wu mark and that would be within Sukuna's innate domain. As Yuji confronts Sukuna, he then pelts one of the skulls towards Sukuna's throne, destroying the throne of bones and forcing Sukuna to evade. Yuji then runs towards Sukuna and dodges his punch, going for a roundhouse kick. But of course, this is Sukuna after all, dodging with no effort. Sukuna even calls Yuji's moves boring and proceeds to sit on him and discuss a binding vow between them. We all know how this ends, with Yuji having his head sliced into two and coming back to life. I mean there's not much we can assess about Yuji's ability in this mini bout, but we do know even before the King of All Curses, Yuji has absolutely no fear. We will now be entering the Versus Mahito arc, an arc in which would shape Yuji and develop his character further, as well as realizing the harsh reality behind the Jujutsu world. Just a little context about this arc is that Gojo assigns Yuji to go on a mission with Grade 1 sorcerer Kento Nanami, where they investigate transfigured students at a movie theater. This is when we get introduced to the likes of Junpei and one of the greatest villains Jujutsu Kaisen has seen, 
and that is Mahito. Anyways, it would be in chapter 19, where Yuji and Nanami would meet for the first time. Yuji would say to Nanami, I'm weak and useless, I've been hearing a lot of that these days, but I'll become strong. If I don't, then I won't be able to choose the way I die. Which again shows the resolve of Yuji. Right now his mental toughness was already high, but after the events which follow in this arc, only make him stronger mentally. Chapter 20 would be when Yuji and Nanami get down to business, taking on a few transfigured humans on the roof of the building. Here is where Yuji would receive some valuable lessons, as well as awaken something he'd never thought he'd be capable of doing. As the cursed spirit attacks, Yuji dodges in time. That is when we are revealed to be the very first time of Yuji being able to somewhat control his cursed energy to a degree. During this moment, we see a flashback of Gojo explaining the authenticity of Yuji's curse technique and how it's a lot different when compared to others. Gojo goes on to explain how Yuji's cursed energy can't keep up with his raw speed, and since he can't control it well, the trajectory is linear, meaning Yuji's cursed energy has lag, and so one strike would equal to two hits. From what we learn here is that it is surprising that Yuji's cursed energy can't keep up with him since he's too fast, but we all see that as a win-win situation. The fact that Yuji's physical abilities are that powerful, his cursed energy can't keep up, but it also allows Yuji's strikes to be two times more effective. This would go on to birth Yuji's first jujutsu technique, known as the Divergent Fist. That punch alone destroys the arm of the transfigured human and renders them useless. So, Yuji's physical prowess was already on another level, and now he's getting the grasp of how to use cursed energy and use it to his advantage. More power ups for our boy. Chapter 25 would be when Yuji would have to face off against an agitated Junpei, as he was taught how to use his cursed energy by Mehito, as well as use Shikigami to his advantage. This again would be another huge task for Yuji, since his goal isn't to kill anymore, and he now faces off against someone who can use a cursed technique, rather than a mindless cursed spirit or transfigured human. Junpei would summon his Shikigami Moondregs, but Yuji immediately activates his Divergent Fist, and takes his shot at the Shikigami. It would only send both Junpei and Moondregs back, while sustaining no damage from the attack. Yuji is then launched outside, Junpei attempts to attack Yuji whilst he's in mid-air, but our main protagonist once again shows why his battle intellect is pretty good, as he uses his power to destroy the ground they are on. He then counters with his divergent fist, and lands a blow on Junpei with so much force, it causes him to go back into the school. This is when Yuji manages to convince Junpei to turn things around, regardless of being stabbed by Moon Dregs, however things wouldn't end in the way we would have thought. Chapter 27 would commence the very first battle between Yuji and Mehito. Witnessing the death of his close friend, Yuji would be laughed at by both Sukuna and Mehito. However, this would transform Yuji into something we've never seen before. Yuji would proceed to punch Mehito right across the face, as Mehito notes how his strike has changed. Mehito convinced it didn't do any damage, is then left in surprise that Yuji's punch had actually hit his soul directly, leaving him with a bloodied nose. That's when Mehito realizes due to the fact that Yuji is a vessel to Sukuna, there are technically two souls within his body, which allows Yuji to bypass Mehito's curse technique. Mehito declares that Yuji is his natural enemy, with Yuji quickly devising that his attacks do indeed have an effect on Mehito. During the next few sequences in this battle, we see how Yuji can withstand even the sharpest attacks and keep going. It's as if, though every battle, Yuji is physically getting stronger and stronger. His endurance when compared to his first appearance has become more solid, taking on hits from a special grade curse that is easily much more stronger than the finger bearer. Yuji would then have a slugfest with Mehito, giving as much damage back as he is taking. Even with Yuji being pierced, his resolve is still as strong as ever, vowing to kill Mehito and become stronger. Luckily for Yuji, this is when Nanami comes to save the day. Even though Yuji has holes all over his body, he still carries on fighting. We are then blessed with this fight scene right here. Throughout this battle, Mahito is constantly wary of Yuji and how to avoid getting hit by him. 
Even when Nanami was stuck inside of Mahito's domain expansion, Yuji showed immense punching power by breaking through the barrier from the outside, saving Nanami's life. After Mihito suffers an attack from Sukuna, Yuji takes his chances and certainly believes that he can put an end to Mihito once and for all. Using his divergent fist, Yuji is unsuccessful as Mihito manages to escape. That's when Yuji's body would finally give in, going through an immense amount of pain, yet he still found the strength to keep battling against a special grade cursed spirit like Mihito. However, even when he was in such a state, Yuji was still driven to kill him. With every battle, Yuji's body is becoming more and more terrifying. Yuji's next battle would come in the Kyoto Goodwill event arc, and that would be against Aoi Todo. But it would be in this fight where Yuji would learn from Todo and go on to polish his own abilities. It's also the battle where we get a glimpse of Yuji's supposed curse technique. With Todo appearing out of the blue, Yuji's first instinct is to give Todo a flying knee. Even during the game plan between the Tokyo students, Yuji claims that he will win against Todo. There's just something about Yuji's resilience which makes him such a likeable character. Anyways, even Todo acknowledges Yuji's speed and compliments him for it. But when Todo goes in for a strike, it throws Yuji through countless trees. The power of Todo's punch was so great that Yuji had honestly thought his arm got blasted off. Todo would then kick Yuji's head point blank, believing that he had won the fight. That's when Yuji's insane endurance once again revealed itself, with Todo even in shock. But this is when something weird would happen to Todo after Yuji tells him his type of girl. Now as to what this could be, some say it may be Yuji's dormant curse technique, but I'm not so sure. I mean we are over 200 chapters deep in Jujutsu Kaisen, yet there is still no explanation about what had just happened. But this memory manipulation, if you can call it that, I'll go through later in the video. Anywho, Yuji and Toto would go at it again in complete hand-to-hand -hand combat, with Yuji keeping up with a grade 1 sorcerer's physical prowess. Yuji takes hits and even swings from a tree and kicks Toto in the face. That right there is some insane athleticism. Toto amazed by this states, what wonderful toughness, he's also proactively using the terrain. That's when Toto goes to look up and sees that Toji has disappeared. Toto is then hit head on with Yuji's divergent fist, with Toto realizing how fast Yuji is in preparing his next attacks. Yuji's battle IQ is definitely top tier, quickly understanding certain curse techniques after coming into contact with it and physically knows how to maneuver himself into positions which would benefit him in combat. That is when Yuji outpowers Todo, with the Grade 1 Sorcerer saying how Yuji has tremendous power and states, he has more power in that tiny body than me. That's why his blows can hit me with little cursed power. That's why it's hard to read his movements by the flow of cursed energy. This is also when Yuji gets taught a really good lesson about his cursed energy and how to correctly flow it through his body in order to add that extra edge to his divergent fist. And then we are gifted with this moment right here. This then takes us to Yuji and Toro's face off against Hanami. This fight would display Yuji and Toro's amazing combination against a special grade cursed spirit. Yuji and Toro come crashing down to save both Megami and Maki. That's also when Toro tells Megami, so you've noticed, nobody can stop a guy when he starts growing out of his shell, which is happening with Itadori now. Toro then asserts himself and claims that he will not step in until Yuji learns how to use the Black Flash. This is a technique that not even the most seasoned sorcerers are able to pull off. Yet Todo saw the potential in Yuji and believed he could do it. As Yuji goes to strike Hanami, the cursed spirit dodges him. However, Yuji with his supernatural physical abilities turns the tables and kicks Hanami. To which even Hanami states, he's fast. He has even more momentum than that girl from before, referring to Maki, but it lacks power. Meaning at this point in the series, Yuji's raw physical abilities were at the same level, if not better than Maki's. But we also have to keep in mind, this is before Maki inherits her full potential from Mai. Anyways, Yuji gets one of his strikes wrong on Hanami, which then leads to Toto giving us a memorable moment. My friend. My friend. 
Toto explains how the anger inside of Yuji can't control him. Only when he is in a state of mindfulness will Yuji be able to reach levels he never thought he could reach. With some intense concentration, Yuji finally hits Hanami with a technique that not even experienced sorcerers could do, and that would be the Black Flash. The aftermath of this black flash would cause Hanami's left arm to shatter. This leaves Yuji shell-shocked, and Toto explains it as Yuji getting a taste of his cursed energy. This moment here is pivotal towards Yuji's strength, with Toto declaring that Yuji can now become even stronger. The craziest part about this is what Hanami would say, as they state, I heard Sukuna's host was immature as a shaman, but in addition to that strange man, that's probably a wrong assumption. Both Toto and Yuji realize the effect the Black Flash has had on Hanami and decide it's time to start cooking. Hanami understands that Toto and Yuji are going to be a problem, and they then begin to get serious. The combo attacks from Yuji and Toto is one of my favourite bits in JJK. These two went all out and sync their techniques together so effortlessly, with the pair outmatching Hanami, leaving the cursed spirit in disarray. Toto feels totally reassured that they can beat Hanami since Yuji is there with him. Yuji would then go on to do something unseen before, and that would be using the Black Flash four times in a row, rivaling Kento Nanami's record, which shows that Yuji's growth of development is actually insane. Yuji is a very special character who can adapt and learn abilities in a blink of an eye. It makes you wonder how much more powerful could he have become if he was born into a world of Jujutsu. As Hanami sees no escape, it decides that it's time to encapsulate the pair in its domain expansion, but luckily for them, this guy would appear and save them from this dire situation. At this point in the series, Yuji would certainly be on the level of a grade 1 sorcerer. It was even mentioned how his physicality is much stronger than Toto's, meaning the sky is the limit for Yuji. You could even compare Yuji's physical prowess to Toji's. That is if Yuji polishes his abilities a bit more, but it's crazy to think that Yuji also has the capacity to use cursed energy and certain jujutsu techniques on top of that. So now we will need to move forward straight to the death painting arc. This would be when Yuji develops himself into a much more mature sorcerer, and someone who surpasses that mental barrier of also killing living beings rather than just cursed spirits. Yuji and Nobara would be taking on the Death Painting brothers, Esso and Kichizu. During Esso's attack, Yuji grabs Nobara and outpaces the technique strike, again showing off Yuji's incomprehensible speed that would only make sense to the special grades as well as Maki and Toji. It would be in Yuji and Nobara's impressive Black Flash combo that the narrator would state the will to completely stop this enemy before Winged King reaches Kukisaki, this sincerity is what defines Itadori, with an athletic ability and a sense of combat that defies even Maki Zenin, and the power of curses bestowed upon him. He is beloved by that black spark. This Black Flash combo would leave Esso with his right arm all severed, forcing him to escape. Esso would jump onto a truck, but Yuji is able to keep up with such speed with little to no effort. That is when Yuji would finish off Esso. So to put it simply in this battle, it was again declared that Yuji was above Maki's physical abilities at the time. I would describe Yuji as someone who was given a heavenly restricted body without the restrictions if that makes any sense. The Shibuya Incident Arc I know you guys are all here for this part specifically and I completely understand. This arc would go on to define Yuji and elevate his character to a level that would birth a literal physical monster. And to believe all this happened in a single night, this is key towards Yuji being as powerful as he is in the latest chapters of the manga. So Yuji's journey in Shibuya kicks off with his battle against the Grasshopper Curse who he had come across in the train station. Yuji would get straight to work and blast the grasshopper with a single kick and follow up with a punch. This grasshopper would throw the kitchen sink at Yuji, but Yuji's dodging and physicality is just on another level. Yuji would then face this curse head on in a slugfest. It would be the grasshopper's forearms versus Yuji's two arms. This grasshopper curse getting completely battered says how he has everything better than a human, yet is confused why he's getting annihilated by Yuji. 
During this hand-to-hand -hand combat, Yuji sustained zero damage and no hits whatsoever. This would only end in this grasshopper's demise, with Yuji displaying how much he has elevated from the very beginning. Moving a little forward in this arc, Yuji would find himself reunited with Megumi and Takuma Ino. Yuji decides to punch the curtain in Shibuya with all his strength. This leaves Takuma Ino in complete shock. He would go on to say in his head, seriously, if we're talking straight striking power, he might be on Nanami's level. So this just backs up my case even more. Yuji easily walks into being a grade 1 sorcerer, but how much more power would he need to be associated with the special grades? Anyways, Yuji and Megami would face off against the cursed user, Awasaka. Yuji and Megami commence this battle by throwing all sorts of combination punches at the old man, but this wouldn't be enough to completely defeat Awasaka. Megami then understands Awasaka's curse technique, with Yuji following up by throwing a literal card towards the cursed user. Awasaka would state, What raw power, I gotta stay on my toes. Even an experienced cursed user who is a psychotic serial killer was taken aback by Yuji's insane physical power. Yuji and Megami then outsmart Awasaka and completely beat the living daylights out of him, to which they defeat the old man, and Megami would compliment Yuji by telling him, you can pull off refined attacks surprisingly well. This would solidify Yuji's sudden growth with each battle. With no prior experience, and in a matter of months, Yuji would be on a level that other sorcerers would dream to be at. Yuji would then find himself fighting against Choso, as the death painting would use its piercing blood against Yuji. But Yuji's battle intellect is of high caliber, as he jumps to anticipate its attack, and just before the piercing blood reaches his face, he dodges and maneuvers into an attack position. Yuji is quick to understand that piercing blood only moves fast at the beginning, so as long as he can continue dodging it and change the direction, he can still get in close and make it into a fist fight where Yuji has the advantage. However, Choso would use Supernova, with Yuji taking all the damage to his back. He would also get his foot stabbed, but this wouldn't stop Yuji from giving Choso a fly kick. He would also switch his body into a different position instantly and lay another hit on Choso, but this would cause Choso to go all out, laying into Yuji and getting a direct hit on him with his piercing blood, but that still isn't enough to kill Yuji. Yuji stands tall with Choso stating, crap this guy is strong. Mini Mekamaru would then advise Yuji to head to the bathroom and create a distraction under the sprinklers as this would numb Choso's blood manipulation. Yuji and Choso would enter a sequence of hand-to-hand -hand combat that is on a totally different degree. With Yuji landing a kick to the face of Choso's, he believes that he can win. Choso would use a last resort and that was by protecting a little piece of blood to shoot straight into Yuji's liver. The fear which was instilled into Yuji when he first fought against the finger bearer is no more. Those thoughts wouldn't control Yuji anymore as he turns his fear into cursed energy and clears his mind of all distractions. Choso then realizes that Yuji had only hit him three times, yet he sustained an insane amount of damage. He then understands Yuji is a severe threat and goes all out. Yuji would go on to completely toy with Choso in the sense of battle. Unfortunately for Yuji, he would get hit with a devastating blow, but he was still breathing. That's when Choso gets close to deliver the finishing blow, but undergoes this crazy memory manipulation, which even catches Sukuna off guard. Yuji's battle against Choso would go on to showcase to us how far Yuji has come, going toe to toe against a cursed spirit who uses an overpowered cursed technique, yet only using his physical ability to break Choso. This next part right here would shape Yuji's ruthlessness. After Sukuna's mass murderings, Yuji would regain consciousness and all the memories would flood his mind. This part here was needed for Yuji's character, since this experience would elevate his character further. This would then lead to Yuji taking on his natural enemy, Mahito. Witnessing the death of Nanami, Yuji would take on his will, and that is to defeat the patch-faced monster. Yuji would avoid various transfigured humans, but get a surprise hit by Mahito, which would cause a permanent scar across his face. With the pair facing off, Yuji would use his Manji kick, surprising the cursed spirit, as he then follows up with a few more strikes. Throughout this battle, Yuji would reveal his insane physicality, catching one of Mahito's arms and pummeling it into the ground. Mahito would even state, if I take a risk and mess up the timings, I could end up dead. I'll stick to using transfigured humans for now. This is a testament to how much Yuji has improved, so much that even Mahito understands one wrong move and Yuji would kill him. This is also when Nobara comes in clutch, allowing Yuji to take advantage of the situation, giving Mahito a barrage of punches. 
Mahito knows full well that if he doesn't escape from Yuji's barrage of punches, he will die as he makes the desperate decision to disperse and reunite with his clone. Unfortunately for Yuji's case, this would lead to Nobara getting badly hurt by Mahito's curse technique. But during Yuji's first fight with Mahito in Shibuya, is that Yuji would have easily defeated Mahito, but those tricks would get in his way. What makes things even more insane is the fact that Yuji has already been through a hell of a battle against Choso, and his body was used by Sukuna to obliterate both Jogo and Maharaga. So the toll his body has gone through, and still keeping up with Mahito, is on a scale like no other. The shock of Nobara's lifeless body would hit Yuji hard, being hurt by Mahito and not reacting at all. It seemed at this point that Yuji had given up and all the things which had just happened are now crashing down on him. That's when Toto arrives to uplift Yuji, as this would then commence one of the best battles in the entire Shibuya incident arc, and that would be Yuji and Toto versus Mihito. Yuji returns with a black flash straight to Mihito, thumping Mihito away, with the patch face monster even saying, back from the dead to Yuji. Yuji and Toto would then use their famous combination attacks, and it would be revealed that all three of them are using 120% of their true potential. They then get launched outside by Mahito's soul multiplicity. Toto then tells Yuji that they must kick it up a notch and get serious. Mahito would then split up his body, causing both Toto and Yuji to split up, but that wouldn't stop Yuji from displaying some magnificent combat moves. Yuji and Toto reunite, but Mihito would awaken his domain expansion for 0.2 seconds. Toto would lose his arm in this, but still Toto would use his boogie woogie and switch with Yuji, as Mihito is greeted with yet another black flash. Yuji would also defeat Mihito's polymorphic isomer, but this would lead to Mihito's final form, being awakened and known as Instant Spirit Body of Distorted Killing. Even up against such a beast, which has surpassed all of its limits, Yuji looks on with eagerness and a calmness that we've not seen before, with Yuji outmaneuvering a Mihito who has reached levels of an insanely strong special grade. Yuji realises he must constantly use Black Flash mixed with his Divergent Fist to put an end to Mihito. After a mega power strike by Yuji, this would destroy Mihito regardless of him being in his final form. Yuji would then go on to hunt his prey, comparable that to of an eagle and a rabbit, but Mahito's time would come to an end as he is absorbed by Kenjaku. So we can declare that Yuji is indeed stronger than Mahito. It doesn't matter if Toro was there with him or not, I believe Yuji would have still won the fight. Yuji went above and beyond, even displaying a calmness that he wasn't able to do before. This experience is turning Yuji into a monster. This last bit of the Shibuya incident arc would display that even after going through hell, Yuji's endurance is unworldly, coming face to face with Kenjaku. Yuji would be sucked into a black hole from underneath and obliterated by several grade 1 curses, yet he still doesn't back down. To which Kenjaku states, even I'm impressed, Sukuna's vessel is tough. This is when the Shibuya incident arc would come to an end. Yuji has legit been through hell, but this would only amplify his strength further. Now onto Yuji's extermination arc. Well, from what Yuji's been through during Shibuya, he would again be forced to defend himself in crazy circumstances. The first significant thing which Yuji had done during this arc was when he came up against the multiple cursed spirits let off by Kenjaku before he had escaped. Yuji would lure quite a few large curses by himself, outpacing them and with Choso finishing them off. But Yuji would destroy one large curse with a single punch. This would cause Choso to say, he had already impressed me with his power when we fought. Since then he's added finesse, fluid control of cursed energy, along with unreal physical strength. To believe that Yuji hasn't even fully recovered yet, Choso follows up by boldly claiming that Yuji has now become a demon god. So if someone like Choso is saying that about Yuji, I wonder where he will rank amongst the other characters when we come to a decision at the end of this video. This would then be followed up by Yuji and Choso's mini bout against Naoya Zenin, who is known for his speed. His pace would be too much for Yuji and Choso, but Naoya would state, you're tougher than I thought, to be honest I didn't expect much. Naoya understands that he must up his speed against someone like Yuji, but that is when Yuta makes his long awaited appearance. Yuta would take on Yuji, a fight a lot of us had been anticipating for a long time, but then realise quickly why Yuta is ranked as a special grade. Yuji makes a run for it, surprising Yuta with him saying, 
he's fast, I expected to take him out in my initial rush. That's when Yuji jumps over a car for cover, Yuta attempts to slash him, but again he's left in shock and says, you're like Maki. Then Yuji punches the car directly at Yuta in a crazy fashion, but Yuta returns the favour by blocking Yuji's escape route. Yuji would even tank a hit from Yuta, as well as dodge Yuta's katana attacks by a hair's length. Yuji then manoeuvres his way into a car and uses a blunt knife from inside to block Yuta's katana attack. However, even with a blunt rusty knife, Yuji was surprisingly keeping up with Yuta's katana and speed. Regardless of being slashed, Yuji would break Yuta's katana into two with just his kick. Yuta with no surprise says he broke it. Well of course, he's Gojo Sensei's pupil, this was never going to be easy. That is when this fight would come to an end and Rika would grab a hold of Yuji, leading to him getting killed. So I guess you could say 1-0 to Yuta at the moment. Yuji's next battle would take place in the perfect preparation arc, where Yuji would go from battling Yuta to Kinji Hakari. This would prove Yuji's resolve and how much hunger he has to become stronger and protect his loved ones. From what we understand is that Hakari is incredibly strong and has no fear whatsoever, very similar to Yuji himself. When Hakari calls Yuji's bluff, he instantly uses his curse technique and attempts to chop Yuji between the train doors, but in a split second, Yuji jumps up and avoids it. However, Yuji would get rattled physically, which is unheard of, but Yuji's resilience excites Hakari. Yuji would then get hit head on, but get up straight away, Hakari calling Yuji insane. Yuji would carry on to take hits, but after the third hit, Yuji still gets back up, leaving Hikari to say, he's taken three hits without guarding, and I was smacking him around before that too, what are you made of? This causes Hikari to gain respect for Yuji, as he complies with their plan on how to get Gojo back, as well as the intense culling games ahead. We have now entered culling games territory. This is where Yuji would get truly tested and a few battles in this arc which puts this new demon god Yuji in situations he wouldn't have expected. Yuji would take on Haba and Hanyu straight after entering his colony. This would be an ambush by them, Hanyu would fly at insane speeds and crash Yuji through several buildings but she is surprised by Yuji's endurance and says, damn this guy is tough that would have turned most people into mince meat. She even mentions that Yuji is no normal guy. Yuji even thinks outside the box by picking up a piece of rubble and imbuing it with cursed energy, damaging Hanyu to an extent. Like I already said plenty of times before, Yuji's battle intellect is actually really good. Yuji would then face off against Haba, who tries to fly away but Yuji simply grabs his leg and pulverizes him through 10 stories of a high rise building. Haba would say, this brat, what insane physical prowess. Yuji quickly realises that Haba uses his propellers, as he then attacks Yuji from inside the building, but through some strategizing from his previous battle with Hanyu, Yuji cracks Haba dead on in the middle of his head. Haba gushes with blood believing Yuji's hand has been shattered, but little does he know, he's coming up against a demon god. Yuji then effortlessly knocks Haba out. The way Yuji now sees combat has far exceeded his potential. He catches on fast and can devise one's techniques and abilities very quickly, analyzing it in a matter of minutes and using it to his advantage. The growth is incredible. Yuji would then be tested yet again, but this time against his trickiest opponent, where the odds would be against him. Yuji vs Higuruma would start off with Yuji forcing his way to try and get Higuruma to give Yuji his 100 points but this would be Yuji's first time taking on a domain expansion all by himself. Higuruma's deadly sentencing would prove to be one of Yuji's most meticulous battles. This right here gets a bit complicated since Higuruma's domain expansion all falls on whether Yuji is found guilty of the following statements by the judge man. This all comes down to a battle of intellect. When Yuji was found guilty, all his cursed energy was taken away from him, allowing Higuruma to get an advantage and hurt Yuji with his gavel. However, just like all of Yuji's previous opponents, Higuruma states, how's he able to fight me equally without cursed energy? He also goes on to say, it's not his strength as a sorcerer, it's his natural body. His durability as an organism must be overwhelmingly high. Just like the other opponents, Higuruma decides to go all out from the get-go, but with every attempt Higuruma makes, he can't even get a single hit on Yuji, but when Yuji is under the giant gavel, he realises that he wouldn't be able to do much without cursed energy and has a moment to think. This is when he summons the court again, but Yuji would be given the death penalty 
forcing Higuruma to use his Executioner's Sword. And it's understood that even with a single slash from this sword, Yuji would die instantly. To make things worse, Yuji has absolutely no cursed energy at his disposal. This is when Yuji takes advantage of the situation and uses a distraction reminiscent of Toji and punches Higuruma right in the gut. Higuruma's moral compass understands that Yuji was taken control of when Sukuna committed mass murder in Shibuya, but this resilience, battle intellect, and incredible physical prowess sways Higuruma who decides to give Yuji all his points. This next part would be a massive step from what Yuji had just gone through and Yuji would finally face off against Sukuna for the first time physically. Chapter 212 would change the direction of Jujutsu Kaisen forever. A 15 finger Sukuna would punch Yuji right in the stomach, launching him through several buildings. Although it was an intense hit, Yuji casually walks up to the hospital building and using the craziest physical jump we've ever seen from him, he gets right in the face of Sukuna. This even surprises the king of all curses himself. Yuji would launch Sukuna with a single punch, to which Sukuna states, what is this strength? Yuji proceeds to fling a piece of the road at Sukuna and with insane speed, use a road sign to try and hit this demon. But this part right here makes you wonder who or what Yuji truly is. As Sukuna declares, I get it, the boy is from that time. Yuji then takes a direct hit from Sukuna's dismantle and goes on to take a whole lot more as he walks straight up to Sukuna whilst enduring this insane pain. So Yuji against a 15 finger Sukuna has actually surprised me. It indeed is a massive jump for Yuji but he managed to hold his own for a while against probably the strongest entity in the world of Jujutsu. Yuji's final battle so far would be alongside Maki as they both take on Sukuna. Yuji and Maki go through all sorts of combinations to take out Sukuna, but he calls it all boring. The battle gets a bit intense, but that's when Uraume ruins all the fun and retrieves Sukuna in his new body. But what we can take from this is that Yuji is still levels away from reaching the ability to do some damage to Sukuna. But we have to keep in mind that he's still a first year who has only learned how to utilize his incredible physical prowess and use his cursed energy to his advantage. So for Yuji to take on Sukuna head on for a while and still be alive is beyond incredible. Yuji has proved to us all that he's on par with even the most powerful characters in the series. He even kept up with a full potential Maki, meaning Yuji isn't far at all when compared to a full strength Maki. So we finally analyzed every single battle of Yuji so far as to understand how far Yuji has come in terms of strength, but what exactly is Yuji's curse technique? We had gone through his divergent fist earlier and how effective his black flag is. But what is this memory manipulation? Well from my point of view it's definitely something that is important but there is legit little to no information about it. Other than it was used on Todo and also Choso. Choso's memory makes sense since it was revealed to us that Yuji is also a death painting room but Todo's memory doesn't make any sense at all unless it was a gag added by Akutami. But if Yuji were to have a cursed technique this would easily put him in discussions amongst the special grades. Now as for the many testimonies about Yuji's strength, this all starts off with Megami's first encounter with Yuji stating what raw strength. Megami knew straight away that Yuji wasn't normal. This would be followed up by Toro statements during the Kyoto Goodwill event arc saying what wonderful toughness. He's also proactively using the terrain as well as he has more power in that tiny body than me. That's why his blows can hit me with little cursed energy. That's why it's hard to read his movements by the flow of cursed power. Toro was one of the first people to truly understand how much potential Yuji has. Even up against Hanami, they go on to state, he's fast, he has even more momentum than the girl from before, referring to Maki, but it lacks power. Takama Ino even stated this in the Shibuya incident arc by saying, seriously, if we're talking straight striking power, he might be on Nanami's level. To add on to these testimonies, Kenjaku even goes on to say, even I'm impressed, Sukuna's vessel is tough. It's a little funny since Kenjaku is the one who had created him, so he definitely knows something that we all don't. But this statement right here from Higuruma would sum up Yuji's crazy power, as he says, it's not his strength as a sorcerer, it's his natural body. His durability as an organism must be overwhelmingly high. And lastly, a testimony about Yuji's strength from the king of all curses himself, Ryomen Sukuna, as he goes on to say, what is this strength? which shows that even Sukuna was surprised by Yuji's raw power. So now we will be diving into the famous three tests part of the Ozin power scaling system. 
Each test will be scored out of 20. Anyways, the first one will be the physical ability test. This includes his speed, durability and raw power. From what we had analysed from the very beginning, all the way to his latest battle, was the fact how many of his opponents were flabbergasted by Yuji's insane physical prowess. There were constant shouts of Yuji being on par with Maki or even stronger. But what about when compared to a full strength Maki? I certainly believe that Yuji's physical prowess isn't far off at all from a full powered Maki. They are both extremely close especially with what Yuji had displayed recently against Sukuna. Yuji has speed which exceeds that of your average sorcerer and he is easily faster than all of the grade 1 sorcerers. The only ones who sort of beat him at pace are the special grades as well as Maki and Naoya. However that is just by a little bit. Under a bit more training, he'll get on par with them in no time. Yuji's endurance is also amazing. He is the only person to be slashed by Sukuna, yet still keep moving forward. But enough of my rambling, from what we've just gone through in all the battles, we all know how powerful Yuji is physically. So I'm going to score Yuji an 18 out of 20 for his physical ability test. I mean it is self explanatory why Yuji is being scored so high. Moving on to the second test, and that would be the battle intellect test. This is determined on how fast Yuji can devise one's abilities or plans and how to counter them. It feels like Yuji's battle intellect all came naturally to him. After a few experiences in battle against curses, he would develop the sense of strategizing the best ways to kill a curse and what the fastest method would be. But Yuji's battle intellect would shine the most against Higuruma. That fight would be a testament of how far Yuji has come when it comes to breaking down one ability and how to overcome a dire situation. However, it's still not on the same level as the likes of Todo, Hakari and the special grades. So I'll be scoring Yuji 14 out of 20 for his battle intellect. Now to the final test and that would be the Jujutsu ability test. So far Yuji has been able to find a state of calmness and recently learn how to flow his cursed energy to his advantage. Yuji was also able to merge both the Divergent Fist with the Black Flash. But at the end of the day, these are basic Jujutsu techniques. Yuji having no inherited curse technique is kind of holding him back a bit from entering a level which could allow him to battle the strongest. But he definitely makes up with his physical prowess. There is so much room for Yuji to add more Jujutsu techniques but it all depends on him mastering his cursed energy. I guess in this instance, it's a lot easier to compare the phenomenon of his character to Maki and Toji. But it doesn't mean Yuji's Jujutsu abilities are weak. He utilizes the Divergent Fist and Black Flash to a degree where he can one shot people and break them down with just a few punches. But the fact that Yuji can sort of use Black Flash at will is insane. So I'll be scoring Yuji 12 out of 20 when it comes down to his Jujutsu abilities. That's mainly because he doesn't have an inherited technique but he makes do with the little Jujutsu abilities he has. But regardless, Yuji is still a demon god. So how strong is Yuji Itadori? The main protagonist of Jujutsu Kaisen has been given a final score of 44 out of 60 which is actually crazy considering the fact that Yuji still has so much room to learn new abilities and techniques. Yuji has this untapped potential that we all don't know about but to come this far on just his insane physical prowess alone is something to be proud of. So what exactly was I saying when I mentioned that Yuji is stronger than Yuta? For me, Yuji is a high grade 1 sorcerer, almost touching the special grade rank. But it all depends on which direction Akutami takes his character and whether Yuji actually has an inherited curse technique. But until that happens, Yuji is not stronger than Yuta at all. So we've come to the end of this incredibly long video. Analyzing and dissecting Yuji's battles took a toll but 44 isn't a bad score at all. With just a few more developments in his character or a crazy power boost would easily take Yuji to the level of a special grade. I know a lot of you guys will be killing me for this so let me know what you all would have scored Yuji out of the three tests down below and why. As always like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are new and I'll see you all in the next one.